Welcome to Macro Monday on Investec Focus Radio SA, a podcast about what's driving global and local markets. I'm Chris Holdsworth, Chief Investment Strategist at Investec Wealth and Investment. Every Monday morning, I'll update you on key developments from the past week and what you need to know about the week ahead. If you'd prefer to watch a video with the graphs and charts I referred to in the podcast, just go to investec.com forward slash macro Monday. Good morning. This week, we're going to have a look at performance of a few key SOEs in South Africa and what is implied for the currency. We'll have a look at the non-farm payrolls print and how it confirms that the US labor market is now starting to slow. And we'll have a look at European inflation and what it implies for interest rates over there. We're going to start off for South Africa. There's been a fairly steady improvement in the energy availability factor from ESCOM. The latest reading on the website is up to 59%, which is the highest reading in two years. And the chair of ESCOM has tweeted that actually the latest high frequency data suggests that it's up to 65%. And the target for next year is at 70, which is all very encouraging, especially when you combine that with the amount of solar panels that have been imported over the past couple of years, which has also taken quite a bit off of load shedding. The net result is we've had a massive reduction in the level of load shedding so far year to date. And this is one of the reasons why we overweight SA Inc. within the South African equity universe. If load shedding is roughly half this year of what it was last year, that will imply a massive uptick in earnings because a lot of the costs that would have been spent on diesel drop straight through to the bottom line. So we're expecting some form of margin expansion for SA Inc. type companies as a result primarily of reduced load shedding. It's not due to reduced maintenance. If you look at planned maintenance, it's roughly in line with this time of the year from what we've seen over the past couple of years or so. So there has been a genuine improvement and hopefully with more to come. If we look at a few other key SOEs, the total number of containers handled at ports in South Africa in March was just 3% off the highest that we've seen for the month of March. And if you look at the total tonnage, it's transited on SA railways. That's also ticked up as well. And the net result is our composite SA SOE index has been ticking up. It's well off the bottom, which was around about March last year or so. So SOEs in aggregate are less of a burden on the South African economy than they were around last year. I'm going to come back to that point shortly. As a starting point, it's worth recognizing that the dollar is still very strong. The trade-weighted inflation-adjusted dollar has only been stronger than it currently is on two occasions in the past 50 years. Interestingly, it did strengthen further over the past month as U.S. growth disappointed. Inflation proved a bit stickier than expected, and there was a a flight to safety dollar included, so we saw the dollar strengthen against most currencies. There were a couple of exceptions. Those were commodity currencies. The czar was amongst them. The rand strengthening by about 2% against the dollar over the past month or so. Most of that, funny enough, was not simply due to commodities. We can estimate the extent to which there's SA-specific risk in the currency by looking at the RAND relative to a basket of commodity exporting emerging markets. And the RAND strengthened by about 1.5% against that basket. So about half a percent of the RAND strength of the past month was due to the broad basket of commodities and what emerging market commodity exporting countries were doing. And then 1.5% was SA specific, presumably in part attributable to the improved performance at ESCOM and the other SOEs. There is still a sizable element of SA specific risk in the czar, about 8% or so. If it were to be the case that the RAND was trading in line with our commodity exporting emerging market peers, it would be at 17.10 or so versus a materially weaker spot. So there is still a fat margin of safety in the czar and largely as a result of still the ESCOM and other SOEs hindrance in the SA economy. There's less of a hindrance than before, but still a hindrance, and other concerns around SA linked to foreign policy and the election coming up, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't necessarily imply that the RAND is going to strengthen further. A lot obviously hinges on the election result coming up in May, but it is worth just recognizing that some of that risk premium in SA has, has eroded. Switching to employment, the non-farm payrolls numbers disappointed in the US. It's a pretty weak reading. It was 175,000 jobs versus the consensus of 240. And it just ties in with a range of other data points that have pointed to a weakening of the US labor market. If you look at the unemployment rate, it's ticked up. It's now 3.9%. That's tied with the highest rate that we've seen for a couple of years. If you look at job openings, they've contracted. And they've contracted across a range of sectors, but particularly construction, which suggests that construction activity is starting to weaken. If you look at the, the number of job openings, it's still in excess of the total number of people seeking employment. So there's still more jobs on offer than people looking for a job. But those two series are becoming increasingly similar and we expect that they will match in the not too distant future. So we do expect that the US jobs market will continue to show signs of softening and that will allow the Fed to cut 
a couple of times by year end. Switching to Europe, European inflation came out at 2.4%. That was in line with the last month, in line with consensus. Core inflation is running at 2.7%. These are numbers which are probably getting to the point where they're quite acceptable for the ECB, especially when you consider that there's downside risk ahead, given that French PPI inflation is running at below minus 7% and PPI inflation in Germany is negative 2 so we think the inflation situation is largely under control in Europe, and that allows for the ECB to cut from June, even though the Fed is only likely to cut from a point later in the year. So we're going to see some degree of monetary policy divergence between developed markets starting from as soon as next month. And that's where we're going to leave it for this week. That's all for this episode. Do tune in next week for more investment insights from me, Chris Holdsworth, and the Investec Wealth and Investment team. If you haven't yet added us to your podcast feed, you can subscribe to Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you listen. And please take a minute to rate our podcast so we can surface this content to the broader investment community. If you want to see the graphs that are referenced in the podcast, you can watch a video version of this recording at investec.com forward slash macro monday. The views expressed are those of the contributors at the time of publication and do not necessarily represent the views of Investec Wealth and Investment International and should not be taken as advice, guidance or recommendation. Investec Wealth and Investment International, a member of the JSC Equity, Equity Derivatives, Currency Derivatives, Bond Derivatives and Interest Rate Derivatives Markets, an authorized financial services provider and a registered credit provider.